Hey guys, it's Natalia and welcome back to another custom order episode. So today we're making another custom dress that I'm super excited to make. This one is probably my favorite because it's the most personally like me styled type of dress. So she wanted a fun little dress for her birthday and she sent me this inspiration picture which I happen to have on my mood board and I see it every single day because it's literally on the little board I have like above my sewing machine over there. And I told her I was like I am obsessed with that dress. I love that dress so much. I'm so glad you said that. That is so my style right up my alley. And I made a variation of it obviously I don't like to recreate things and like completely make it over but this is the recreation that we kind of decided on and I'm super excited about it it still has that kind of almost lingerie feeling with the little lace-up part but it is a little different and I am super excited to do it so let's get to it so for the past two videos I've actually just made patterns for all the customs and then kind of draped them but for this one specifically I'm going to go ahead and drape it first and then turn it into a pattern so you guys will see that process. I'm using my older mannequin that I don't actually really like at all because it's very broken, not very sturdy, it literally wiggles around so much but this person has a smaller chest than my other mannequin does and this one as you can tell is quite flat so it's just going to be easier for me to be able to drape the chest part better which is the only part I'm really going to be draping on anyway. So that's why I'm using this one and not the other one. The other one has just a lot bigger chest So this is just gonna be easier So because this top is pretty much like a bustier top and then like a skirt on top of it I'm gonna go ahead and kind of do it in two parts and do kind of like the top and then the skirt and then put that together Because it's just gonna be easier that way. So for the top you're gonna need some padding It just helps it stay up a lot better and it gives it a little extra support That way she doesn't have to wear a bra with it or anything and it gives her a nice shape and it doesn't stay kind of like weird and not up because I feel like with a lot of strapless dresses if they don't have padding in it then they just kind of like flop down or look weird so we're gonna use these so I'm gonna go ahead and pin these on here okay so I've kind of put them on here honestly this mannequin really sucks and you can't like pin into it very well and it's obviously not sturdy so every time I try to pin it it just like moves back so I really do not recommend this dress form if you're actually trying to do things professionally but it'll have to do I'm gonna drape over honestly just one of them and then transfer it to the other side but I want to make sure I have both on there for when I put it all together I want to make sure that it looks right so let's start draping so when you're draping you usually want to use a fabric that's obviously inexpensive so you can mess up on it and you can draw all over it and it's not gonna cost you a lot so usually people use muslin which is this just pretty much like cotton fabric that isn't dyed or anything it is literally the most plain cotton fabric you could possibly find and it's really cheap so that's what most people use and that's what I'm gonna be using so I'm gonna take a small square of it and I usually like to just rip it instead of cutting it like you cut into it and then rip it so that it rips right on the grain line and you make sure you have like a perfectly straight piece so we're gonna get draping <laughs> So now that I've draped it, I also just went ahead and took it off the form and kind of cut around it and pinned it all together nicely. And this is what it looks like. Obviously it's just pinned, so it doesn't look as great as if it were obviously sewn. But here's the general idea of what it's going to look like. I have like the top strip and then the two sides of that. And obviously when you're patterning this and you're gonna put a padding inside of it, you have to make sure that this is a little bit bigger than the padding so the padding fits into it just fine. So once I pattern this out, I'm gonna go ahead and add like an extra like eighth of an inch kind of deal or maybe a fourth just to make sure that it fits nicely. So there's that. So I transferred my pieces on to paper and this is what they look like. I'm gonna go ahead and drape the bottom part of the bodice and then we're gonna do the same thing. So here are all my pieces now. They're not necessarily perfect yet. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these onto muslin again, just like a final version and put it on the mannequin and see how it fits together. But this is kind of what we are working with. So this is where I'm at with it. I don't know how well you can see that, but I ended up having to add a little bit more up here 
and up here because I kind of forgot to consider the top little band up here. So I recut it out and made it a little bit higher. I also added padding to the waist to fit her measurements as well. The entire like back is a little bit too big for her. So I kind of just went ahead and figured out where it would, the middle would actually be, which is a little bit less than the actual mannequin is. So like essentially it will be like open like that much in the back. But I also figured out like where the midpoint of the side would be because it's a little bit in from where the actual sideline seam is on here just to kind of visualize it better. Obviously it's not the most accurate way to do things, but I just wanted to kind of visualize it. So this is where we're at with it. I think it actually looks pretty decent now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mark everything, make sure that everything is good and remeasure about a billion times uh, just to make sure again everything is good and everything fits perfectly. And then I'm going to adjust the patterns that I made and then we can go ahead and do the back and the skirt. Okay, so I went ahead and actually already draped the back because it's only two pieces. It wasn't like that big of a deal. I didn't feel like actually recording it, but I finished draping it. I transferred it onto the pattern. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. So these are all of my patterns right now. This is the center back, side back, the side front, center front, the two cut pieces, and then the top band of that. So this is what we're working with. I actually think I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this out in the black fabric because I want to kind of just get started on that and then we'll do the skirt later. I kind of want to focus on getting this bodice like perfectly done and the skirt kind of be a separate point and then put it together. I don't know why, but I like working kind of in pieces and I kind of want to just get this situated. So let's start cutting out. So I just cut it out and roughly pinned it together to kind of see what it's gonna look like. As you can tell, I have two different types of fabrics. We decided to go with this really pretty kind of textured black along with this tensile black just to give it a little bit of an extra dimension. So I've kind of cut it out in a pattern of like textured, not textured, textured. And then same here, this is textured, non-textured, but the top bands are gonna be textured on both of them. So that's kind of what it's starting to look like. I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing this because I'm gonna have lining in it. I don't really need to serge any of the edges or like finish the edges because it's gonna be all within the lining anyway. So I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna go ahead and start piecing everything together, start putting everything together. And I'm actually gonna cut out the lining out of the same black fabric out of this one, just because I have a lot of it and I'd rather use that than like go buy more lining or anything like that. So that's what we're gonna do. I am gonna put some boning into it as well, just to give it a little bit of structure. And then obviously we're gonna add the padding into it as well, but we'll do that with the lining. So I'm just gonna start sewing all this together. <laughs> So I finished sewing it all and I put it on my mannequin just to kind of like see if there's anything I need to fix. It's inside out right now, so that's why all the seams are on the outside, but it is a little bit wide, kind of like here on the side seams. So I am gonna take it in a little bit on both sides. I've kind of pinned where I need it to be and it ended up being like really big in the back and I don't know how I managed to do that. I may have added like a lot of seam allowance without knowing. It's always best if it's bigger rather than smaller, so I don't really care. I can just like cut into that later. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take that in and kind of do the fixing that I need to do and then adjust the patterns as well so that when I cut out the lining, it is all good. So I went ahead and fixed the few little seams that I needed to and took it in a little bit more where needed. And it looks a lot better now. Obviously you can't really see much detail into this right now, but obviously since it's just one layer right now and it doesn't have the lining or any interfacing or anything like that, it's obviously not staying up very well on its own because it's just very floppy. But this is where we're at with it. Obviously it doesn't actually close in the back because the back is bigger than this girl's measurement. So I have measured it and it will be fine for her. I'm gonna trim a little bit excess down here because I kind of made this longer than needed for the waistline. But other than that, it it is looking just fine and I went ahead and fixed all the patterns and adjusted all the things that I did on there onto those so that when I cut out the lining it fits just fine. So yeah, I think I'm going to start cutting out the lining so I can start interfacing it and kind of finish up this bodice and then we'll do the skirt. next day. I know I look the same, but it is the next day. I finished up the lining last night and I'm going to show you guys where I'm at with it. So here is the lining and here is the actual bodice and here are the little 
paddings that are gonna go under it so it's gonna look something like this um but yeah so the next step in making sure that this whole bodice is like really tight and sturdy and it stays up well on its own because it's strapless is it gonna be interfacing the lining so that adds like an extra kind of support it adds a little bit more uh, stiffness in it because obviously we want it to like look nice and tight and firm on her so I'm gonna add interfacing to all the pieces of the lining and then we'll add some boning into it and then we'll attach them and start putting it all together but that is what I'm gonna do first just to make sure it is nice and secure <laughs> So I went ahead and put this all on here. I'm going to go ahead and iron it on now. The smart thing to do would have been to put these on the pieces before I sewed it together, but I kind of just spaced on that. So I'm putting them on after, but if you're doing this, it's much easier to put them on to the pieces and then sew the pieces together, but you know, it's fine. It still works. <laughs> So now that I have this all ready, I'm gonna take these seams and I have pressed them all to one side and I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch over here so that it creates a casing for me to be able to put the boning into it. It's not gonna be exposed or anything, it's gonna be on the inside, so it doesn't really have to look absolutely perfect, but that is what I'm gonna do on all of these. So as you can tell, every single seam now has kind of like a casing to it. And I have this steel boning that I bought a while ago that I was gonna make myself a corset and I never did. So I'm gonna use this. Obviously this is kind of small for every single piece comparatively, but I think it'll work just fine just to give it some sort of structure on every single one. So I'm gonna add those in there. So I just put the lining and the actual bodice together and I'm gonna go ahead and sew it across the top all the way over and then we're gonna add in the little cups and then continue to finish this up. Okay, so I've now stitched it together and I actually went ahead and understitched it as well. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. Basically, you stitch the seam allowance down to the lining so that it folds over a lot nicer. Obviously, I still need to iron this out and all that, but it helps it turn around a lot better and keep it in place. I'm now gonna go ahead and insert the cups and I'm gonna go ahead and hand sew those onto the lining and then we'll go from there, see if I need any sort of extra support or extra anything onto this bodice, but we'll see. So I'm actually gonna switch up the way I'm doing things currently. I have not sewn these in yet because I put them in and I realized that the cups that I sewed or like on the bodice are like a little bit bigger than this. So it kind of like wobbles in there and I don't like that. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take off the cups. I'm gonna have to like pull this apart, unfortunately, but that's fine. I really don't care. I'm going to take this apart, just like the top part, like take the lining off of the actual bodice. And then I'm gonna take the cups out and I'm going to kind of like remeasure and resize them down to fit this perfectly. And then I'm gonna reattach them. So that way it fits better. I should have done that from the start, honestly, but I just like thought I could get away with it. Can't. So yeah, sometimes my process of making things is kind of just trial and error instead of actually like figuring it out beforehand, which maybe Maybe I should not do that, but you know what? It always works out in the end, so it's okay. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna take these off and then we're gonna resize these down. Okay, so it's a lot later because I ended up going out to do a bunch of things. So a lot later, it is nighttime now. But I went ahead and did a trial run of what I wanted it to look like for one of the cups. And I think it actually looks really, really good. I basically just draped the fabric over the cup and kind of cut around it to make sure it was like tightly on it. And then I've just like sealed the cup into it pretty much at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I do that on the next one, just because I wanted to kind of like test it out first to make sure like the, what I was thinking of actually works and then put it on the other one. So I'm gonna do that. I think it looks a lot better. And I think that once I put it on there, it'll be a lot more secure and sturdy because it's more like enclosed rather than just like loosely like in between fabrics. So let's do the other one. So 
now that I have both of the cups, I'm going to go ahead and insert them. I'm just going to sew them on to both the front and the lining, and then I'm going to just like do something with the seam later. You'll see what I mean. I'm bad at explaining this without showing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew these into here, and I think they should stay up a lot better than they were before. Okay, so I got it on there and it actually looks so much better and it obviously is a lot sturdier. I kind of like roughly tried it on myself. It's not the same measurements as me, but I just kind of want to see on a person and it actually looks really good. So very excited about that. I think I'm going to leave it there for tonight and come back to it tomorrow morning to start adding the skirt to it. Obviously, this is the most difficult part of it. I actually, I'm mm, just kidding. I'm adding stuff to the skirt too that I kind of just spaced on for a second there. But yeah, I need to go buy the little eyelets for it tomorrow and I also want to buy some like under wire to put into the top if I can find any if not I think it'll be fine but I would like to add that for extra support so those are two things I need to go buy tomorrow but other than that doing well obviously this turned out a lot better this time around I should have done that from the beginning but oh well but yeah I'll catch you guys tomorrow so it is the next day now and I actually just went ahead and found an old bra that I don't use and took the underwire from that so that I can use it on here because I didn't want to go to the store even though I still have to go for the little um, like the eyelets the grommets or whatever but um yeah wanted to kind of get ahead so I took it from that and I'm just gonna be using that for it it works really well and obviously I am like the same cup size pretty much so it works but I went ahead and did one of them just to test it out and it looks really good and I like it so I'm gonna do the second one and show you guys what I did so basically I have went ahead and basted some bias tape all the way around that I'm going to sew down and then I'm going to put the actual wire into it. So this is what the wire looks like. I'm gonna place it in here. This one's already in. I honestly kind of need to like stretch it out a little bit more because it's a little too like inwards and I need it to be a little outwards. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch it out more and then re put it in there. But it looks really nice and I tried it on to see what it looks like on me and it looks a lot better than this one does just like with extra support and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that down then we'll add that in. So this is what it looks like. There's still pins here because I need to finish off the bias tape on both of these sides, obviously, but this is where we're at. I think it looks really nice. So I think it's time we finally start patterning out this skirt and start cutting that out and get that situated so that we can add it to the top and then put the zipper in and then it will be done. I say that as if it's like very few steps, but obviously um, the skirt has a little lace up thing on one of the sides. So that's gonna take me a hot minute, but I'm excited. I think this is gonna be so, so cute. So let's do the skirt. So I'm gonna make the skirt based off of these basic skirt slopers that I have. I have the front and the back. Obviously this is going to be a paneled skirt. So I'm gonna take a panel in from this and kind of bring it down and that's kind of what I'm gonna do with it. So um, yeah, let's do it. So here are my pattern pieces. They look a little bit messy, but essentially when you want to make like princess lines, which is basically what we're doing here, you just kind of take away the dart and instead of having a dart, you just like cut away of it and that's going to be like your seam. So then it like still creates that curve if that makes any sense. So that's what I did on both of these. Obviously I measured it to be her measurements at the uh, waist and hip line and kind of went accordingly. I made it a little bit longer than I think it's going to need to be just so I can kind of mess with that later. But yeah, I added ease to all of her measurements because obviously you don't want it to be super tight, especially because this fabric isn't necessarily stretchy. So I added like a half an inch ish, a little bit more maybe on each just to make sure that it fits okay and whatnot. So there's that. So it is the next day. Yesterday I put together the skirt and then I went out to buy little eyelets 
for it and also some boning because I wanted different boning slash more boning. So I got that. I want to show you guys where I'm at with this skirt. So I have the skirt fully put together. This is not attached yet. I just kind of wanted to visualize it, but this is the kind of like slit part and I've cut out some interfacing to put on the inside so that we can do some eyelets. I went ahead and did like a trial run of what it's going to look like, except I'm going to use some like dark silver kind of blackish ones instead of gold but roughly like it's gonna be like that all the way down and I also went ahead and measured where I want them all to be I'm actually gonna go ahead and hem it like to here pretty much because it's a little longer than I want it to be but we'll do that later I'm gonna go ahead and iron on the interfacing and then we'll start putting in all of the eyelids <laughs> putting in all the eyelets and I'm realizing I put them in backwards like inside out um let me show you guys it's not super noticeable necessarily because the backside looks good too but this is what they look like and this is what they're supposed to look like so you can tell like the slight difference between that and that this is like cleaner looking almost and this has a little bit more like ridges and edges but like it still looks good obviously once these are put in it's really hard to take them out without like ripping the fabric and everything so i went ahead and sent her a picture emailed her and told her like hey i put them in wrong but like they still kind of look good like it's not something you would notice unless you look at the inside and like compare but just like to be transparent and to ask her if like she minds it or not if she does then i will attempt to redo it i wouldn't mind but but also if she doesn't care then I'll just leave it. Kind of a mistake I did not realize but also it doesn't really look bad like you can't tell necessarily but again mistakes can be made but we'll see what she says. I'm gonna continue on with putting together the actual top and the skirt. I'm gonna put in the boning into the top uh, correctly because I haven't really fully done that yet and then we'll put it together at the zipper and we'll be done. <laughs> So I've roughly put it on here. This isn't attached still or anything, but I just kind of wanted to see it and kind of measure it out and all that. And the backside of this has frayed so much that it kind of went in like a good inch or so. So now it's a little too small. So I should have probably finished that edge so it didn't do that. But I'm gonna add some little strips to it just to make it obviously fit her correctly. The skirt's actually too big. I think I need to take in this seam because it doesn't line up with this one is the only one that doesn't line up so i'm going to fix that add a little strip here and then we'll put in the zipper <laughs> So I have it all put together at this point. It looks super cute. I just have to put in the zipper on the back and here's the little panels that I put into it. It's nothing crazy. I mean, doesn't really add too much to it or take away from it, but I went ahead and finished all the edges on the inside as well. So that was nice and neat. And we're gonna go ahead and put the zipper in. So I've got the zipper in now and all that's left is the hem. So I went ahead and surged it all so that I can just go ahead and sew it. And then we will be done as soon as I find some ribbon to put in here or some sort of string to put in there. But so cute, so excited for how this is turning out. that is the finished dress i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video obviously i did not do a very good job of doing this in the correct process or steps i feel like i redid things a bunch of times and just like figured it out along the way which is totally fine but it could have been a lot easier and uh faster but you know what live and you learn and 
that's it but i hope you guys enjoyed it i love this dress so much it's so cute i wish i could keep it i say that with every single custom order but i genuinely wish i could keep this it is so cute and yeah feel free to follow me on instagram so you can stay updated with more custom orders and pictures and stuff if people end up sending me pictures of them in it and yeah that'll be it for today's video and i will see you guys in the next one bye